we're going to be talking about the publishing industry today. Specifically, we're going to be talking about how the publishing industry works and how I think it should work. Welcome to How to Write Good. I am your host, Daniel Poppy. You can find out more about me at danielpoppy.com. If it is your first time here, How to Write Good is a writing podcast that seeks to find principles and advice that can be applied across a broad range of writing situations. If you've been here before, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button below, and share. All right, so when you write a book, uh, people typically think, and this it really is the way pe way it generally works, but there are a more, more nuance to it. There's more nuance to it than what people usually think. So what people usually think when you write a book is that you write a book and then you go to a publisher, and then the publisher says either yes or no to your book. And it really doesn't work that way. What it, How it really works, and uh, the way it works... Even if it did work where you just go to a publisher and then they publish your book, I'm still not a fan of for very specific reasons. But uh, the way it does work is that you go, you write a book, however long that takes you. You know, some people it takes a year. Some people uh, are talking. I've seen some people who are like, yeah, I've been working on my project for seven years. First of all, I think you're insane if you've done that. If you've been working on a project for seven years and you haven't even started to reach out to publishers or you're not finishing it, it's a big, huge bet, right? Uh, and I think that you might run into the sunk costs fallacy if you're doing that, which means that uh, the sunk cost fallacy is where you think, oh, you know, I put so much work into this, so I'm going to keep on moving forward with it. And you kind of have to analyze whether or not you're actually getting into that territory, you know, personally. You have to determine whether the work you put in is too much. You need to step back to cut your losses or whether you uh, need to keep on moving forward. But I've seen people who are like, yeah, I've been working on this project for seven years. Now, if you're very young, it's not as big of a deal. But if you're getting older, it becomes a bigger deal because you know, if you're 20 years old and then you've been working on it since you're 20, that's okay, you know, you're 27 now, that's okay, you've got a lot of uh, time ahead of you to work on stuff. But if you're like 30 and then you're almost 40 and you've been working on something for seven years, first of all, you, you need to test the waters because uh, you don't know if what you're gonna be doing is actually going to be working. And, and to a certain degree, you have to be like, well, my, my stuff is good enough or I know I'm good enough. But I think you have to be very brutally honest with yourself to actually determine whether what you're doing is good enough or not. So how this process actually works is you write your book, right? And then you go to an agent and then the agent goes to a publisher and then your publisher puts your book out. Now, like I said, first you need to write a book, but you need to realize that you need to convince agents to buy your book. That's essentially what they're doing. They're essentially buying your book. They're not literally doing it. They're representing you, but they're going to get a cut of the book. They have to buy into the book. They have to take some of their time and they have to say, hey, I think this is good enough. I think that if it gets put out on the bookshelves, it's going to sell. I'm going to make some money from it. This author is going to make some money from it. I think that publishers want this book as well. Uh, so they are buying your book. They're buying into your book. They're buying into the idea of the book. And I think that what happens with authors is they start to write for agents. And I've talked about this in the past where uh, people start their books in really strange, bizarre ways to catch the attention of agents. And it changes how people write. The nature of like... When you start to write a book and then you get into the publishing field, I think it changes how people write because people think, oh, you know, like if I don't write this way, the agent's, agent's going to pass over the book because think about it, agents see a lot of different books and they're trying to find books that work. They're trying to find books that are different, that catch their attention, that are going to catch the attention of the publisher and then the readers as well because publishers want readers to read books, of course, because the more books people read, the more books people buy. And they're running a business. I mean, I don't blame agents. I really don't. And I don't, I don't dislike them because they're running a business and it's part of the publishing industry. And it's how, uh, it's how, at the very least, publishers would say authors are vetted. And to a certain degree, that can be true. And I'm not dissing on that completely. I think that, I think that, uh, because of the subjectivity of the agents, there's issues with that. But, but that's how publishers would say, Authors get vetted. They go through an agent who knows the industry, who knows what sells. They know their stuff. And then the agent is like, yeah, I want your stuff. 
right? And that's what's happening. But again, when you go through that process, the author can be influenced by what agents want uh, because there are a limited num number of agents and it seems to be the case that there are an infinite number of authors. So you write a book. Uh, you might be writing for an agent, you write, might not be writing for an agent, but you write a book and then you go to an agent and then you, some people take a very long time to get their book through an agency and I'm guessing that most people don't get any books through agencies because I think a lot of people write. I'm guessing that most people actually don't end up getting their books put through agencies. And then after you get an agent, they accept you. They have all, um, they have all their biases, their, their desires, and when they accept you, they are very subjective. And every agent or every agent that I've run into or a lot of them that I've run into, they write back to you and they say, hey, you know, um, this just doesn't fit into what I'm doing right now. And some of them probably think your work is terrible. And that's just the subjective nature of writing. And some of them probably think, you know, this just isn't going to work for me. This isn't what I'm looking for. This isn't the area I fit into. This isn't what I uh, This isn't what my agency is for or what I try to put out. So agents have all their biases. You know, it might be the case that they just don't like something you put in a book, really random. It, because think about it, if you're an author, you probably have specific pet peeves. Agents have pet peeves too. You might use a specific word they don't like. You might use the word moist. They might not be a fan of the word moist. They're, they might be like, oh, I just can't accept anybody who uses the word moist. They might not like how you look. They might not like how you describe characters. There's a million different reasons that they might not like you. So they have their biases. They have... Um, they have their own desires to run their business and they have their ideologies too. And ideologies do play into agencies. There's agents who look for very specific political things in books. There are agents who look for very specific religious things in books, right? Uh, so people, agents definitely have their ideologies as well. They might, you might say something in a book or present something that seems to be a good idea in the book that the agent might disagree with. The agent might think, no, 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 that's not how life works. So they, so they reject your book, right? It might be the case. I think that it's a good argument. I think it's um, safe to say that there's quite a few agents that will do that. And once you get your agent, the, uh, for whatever reason, they pick your book. Once you get in, you're not done yet. That's one gate that you've passed through. And you still, the agent still needs to go to the publisher. And publishers have their own biases. Publishers have their own desires. Publishers have their own ideologies. Publishers have their own business models as well that they're going off of. So the agent is doing something similar to what you did before where they're trying to go to publishers and say, hey, this is a book I've got. I think it's pretty good. I think you should check it out. So uh, when I look at this, what I see is that you have two layers of gatekeeping before you get to actually be published. And I'm sure there are even more than two, depending on how the agency is set up. You know, if you, if you have a very big agent, the agent probably has at least one assistant, and that assistant probably screens your book. So you have to get through to the assistant, and then the, it goes to the agent if the assistant thinks it's good enough. And then it might uh, go through a process of where they're looking at it and seeing if, if it's really fitting into what their business model is. And then the publisher, it could go through multiple different people within the publisher as well. And I'm sure with big publishers, it goes through quite a few people before they say, oh yeah, this is good. Let's move forward with this. So there's a lot of gatekeeping that happens. And then what happens after you get to a publisher is that they are going to edit your book, which I think is fine. I think having your book edited, edited is fine. And I think the majority of people need their books edited. But there might also be situations where publishers are like, you know, you should really take this out of your book or you should really put this in your book because it's going to sell better. And uh, it takes the creative control away from the author. Now, I don't like this system for a very good reason because I dislike gatekeeping. And I think there are there's too much arbitrariness in the publishing industry and the gatekeeping of the publishing industry that I think it's better. Uh, in the end, what matters is how many people want to read your book and how many people want to buy your book. And I know that the publishing industry is going to be this way for quite a long time. I think there is going to be a paradigm flip in the future where it's more, I guess you'd say it's democratic. I don't really think that's the word, but people understand that word in the way I'm trying to express it. It's more uh, 
grassroots. It's more people trying to do things for themselves. I really think the publishing industry is going in that direction. And I think that there's a good chance that there aren't going to be agents in the future. I don't know how far in the future that's going to be, but I think there's a good chance there isn't. And my hope is that there isn't. I know there might be an agent listening to this and being like, oh, but like, where's my job going to go? But I think that if somebody is capable of writing well enough and capable of connecting to editors and capable capable of connecting to cover designers and capable of connecting to everyone they need to connect to to create a final product and make their book good the only people who are deciding whether their book is good at that point is the reader and i do not see a problem with that whatsoever because there's going to be more ideas and there's going to be more books and there's going to be more creativity and there's going to be more risk taking because they don't have to uh they don't have to try to get people uh, a very small number of people to like what they're doing, right? So it is easier to say, hey, I'm going to try something and I'm going to go out to the whole world and push my stuff to the whole world than say, hey, I'm going to try something and I'm going to try to get it through this limited number of agents and publishers, right? It is easier and I think it is better if we're not going through the limited number of agents and publishers because we go from a smaller pool of interest to a much larger pool of interest. So if you have a wacky idea for a book or a book that's off the wall different and you don't think it can work with an agent or a publisher, I would suggest maybe taking a different route because I would say that if you like that book and you like the ideas, there's bound to be someone else who likes it as well. And I think this is more democratic. And I think that the only way we're going to get from all this gatekeeping that goes on in the publishing industry is if people start to do more indie stuff and if indie authors start to become more prevalent. And I'm not trying to push my stuff because I do do indie work. But at the same time, if you know an indie author, I think that you should push their stuff, right? Uh, I think that if you run into an indie author, try indie authors because indie authors are, in a lot of cases, just as good or better than the the books that are out there that, are, that people are reading. The only pe re reason people read uh, the books that are coming out through big publishers is they think that there's this, um, they think the publishers know what they're doing. And to a certain degree, some publishers do, but I see a lot of mediocre stuff come through publishers. And that makes me think they're not actually, they actually don't know what they're doing. I think that the majority of the work that comes out of publishers is mediocre, unfortunately. It's really unfortunate. Um, but at the same time, you know, if there's the majority of the me work is mediocre, how far you, can you go if you're not mediocre? And how much can you do if you're not mediocre, right? And that's why I think that you should start to think differently about publishing. I think that everybody should start to think differently about publishing and reading. It's kind of like the uh, music industry, right? The music industry has a huge indie scene. And I think publishing could have a huge influential indie scene as well that really connects to the readers themselves and brings the readers things that are completely different. And then the readers can see these authors, these writers grow in a different way than they could if they were just going through, if the authors were just going through the publishing. If you enjoyed this podcast and you want to support me, there's really one simple thing you can do. You can go to danielpoppy.com forward slash newsletter and sign up for my newsletter. And when you sign up, you'll actually be able to get access to my publication roadmap. So that's everything I have planned for pretty much every project I have into the next decade. Again, that is danielpoppy.com forward slash newsletter. You can also find the link below.